we can bring sickness on ourselves okay we're going to get into a, a new new uh topic here and that's bringing sickness on ourselves you know when the Israelites left Egypt they were in the wilderness for 40 years and they came across deadly snakes that God had sent because they were speaking against him and Moses and in Numbers chapter 21 verses 6 through 9 it says and the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people and they bit the people and much people of Israel died therefore the people came to Moses and said we have sinned for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us and Moses prayed for the people and the Lord said unto Moses make thee a fairy serpent and set it upon a pole and it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten when he looketh upon it shall live and Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole and it came to pass that if the serpent had bitten any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. They brought sickness on themselves, it says, because they had complained, they were complaining against Moses and God. So these serpents, deadly serpents, they were dying. Why? They brought it on themselves. There are sins that we can commit that we bring sickness on ourselves. And when people pray for us, they don't know why we're not getting healed. Well, they don't know that we brought that sickness. Right here I showed where Israel brought the sickness on themselves for what they did. But we still have that today in personal lives. Someone might have done something and the Lord is taking care of it in this, taking care of it in this kind of way. And then we have people praying for this person. But like I said... The people that are praying, they don't know that the Lord is chastising this person for whatever the sin he might have, or he or she might have committed. So that's one thing that people are like, well, we don't know why they get healed. Well, sometimes we don't know the whole, we don't have the whole picture. Mm -hmm. Right? Everyone that looked on the pole, God healed them from the snake bite. Same thing today. Everybody who lifts up and looks up at God on the cross will be healed spiritually. Amen? Amen. And it's the same today. Like I said, I can do a whole teaching just on these verses right here. But we're not teaching that right now. We're teaching about healings. Second Chronicles, chapter 16, verses 7 through 11. And at that time, Hanai, the seer, which seer means prophet, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, because thou hast relied on the king of Syria, and not relied on the Lord thy God, therefore is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of thy hand. So Asa the king did not turn to God. And because of that, he was unable to defeat, defeat the army of the king of Syria. Because he didn't, right here it says that he didn't rely on the Lord. Then the prophet reminded him about the time he had another battle, and that's in the next verse. He said, Were not the Ethiopians and the Librians a huge host with every many with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet, because thou did rely on the Lord, he delivered them into thy hand. So he's saying at that time he turned it over to the Lord, and look what happened. He had victory. So he did it here and he had victory. This battle here, he didn't give it to the Lord, and he wasn't able to defeat this king. And in verse 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth, to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him, wherein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore from henceforth thou shalt have wars. The prophet saying that the Lord goes around looking for Christians whose heart is for him. And because he didn't seek the Lord, he has become a foolish king, is what it's saying. And because of that, he will be facing many battles. This is what these verses are saying. What battles are we putting ourselves in because of not going to the Lord and for, for not putting Him first? You know, a lot of times we'll go through battles that we don't have to go through because we don't put the Lord first. I hope you all understand what I'm saying. You put the Lord first, He will be with you. Amen. He will help you defeat whatever host of chariots and horsemen, whatever comes at you. You put the Lord first, He's going to be there with you. 
But when you don't, he called this king right here foolish. And that's what we are. When we don't depend on him, then we're foolish. Our battles, we bring on ourselves. And that does sound like us a lot of times, this king. Do we go before marriage counselors or financial advisors, whatever man we need, instead of the Lord first? If they want to learn through this teaching, some of our sicknesses, it's because we didn't take it to God first. We went to a man. We went to a doctor. Okay? This is what this teaching is going to be about. All right? This part is about this. Now, if King Esau would have dropped to his knees when this prophet told him, if he would have dropped to his knees and asked for forgiveness, no telling what God would have done. He probably would have delivered the, the Syrians to him. But he didn't do it. Verse 10, Then Asa was wroth with the seer, the prophet, and put him in the prison house. For he was in a rage with him because this thing. And Asa pressed some of the people the same time. So King Asa did what many of us do. We blame somebody else. He blamed this prophet for, for what happened. We do the same thing. We do the same thing. In different ways, but we do the same thing. It's not, it wasn't the prophet's fault. He was giving them the word of God. But what do we do? Well, it happened because, well, we don't know how to take the blame. A lot of us don't know how to take the blame when it's our fault. We'll blame it on something else like this king was doing here. At verse 11, And behold, the acts of Asa, first and last, lo, they are written in the book of the, the kings of Judah of Israel. And Asa, in the thirty and ninth year of his reign, was diseased in his feet until his disease was exceedingly great. Yet in his disease he sought not the Lord, but to the physicians. Now Asa, after being told what the problem was, still didn't listen. The prophet told him, you lost this battle because you didn't go to the Lord. Now this king, he gets a disease in his feet right here. And what did he, what does it say? He didn't seek the Lord, but a doctor. He died of this disease. Later on in the book, you'll see that he died from it. We're doing the same thing. We're doing the same thing. We know we should go to the Lord. We should go to the Lord first. And it's something we want to really be pushing here because that's he says that many times in his words. Seek me first. Many times he's and you why do you think he says it so often? Because we're hard headed. And we forget. That's why the Bible says it many times. Seek him first. Put him first. Right here, he got a disease. But where did he go? He went to a doctor. And he should have learned from up here because he didn't go to the Lord. He wasn't able to defeat this king. And the prophet told him that. You'd think he would have learned from that. But no. Instead of going to the Lord for his sickness, he went to a doctor. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now this is us and we need to learn from this. Exodus 15, 25, 26, I mean. If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which, have I, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Why did the Lord bring these diseases on Egypt? Because they didn't do what the Lord asked to do. The Lord said, let my people go. But they wanted to be hard. They said, no, we're not letting them go. And he brought all these plagues, all these diseases on them. But he says, if we were to hearken to his voice, listen to him, what would happen? He says right here, he, wouldn't let, he will not let none of the diseases come on us. So what I'm trying to show is that sometimes we bring sickness on ourselves for not listening to the Lord. Remember that. And the reason I'm saying this, I'm giving verses and verses, is because we do that. And then people are out there saying, I don't know why God didn't heal him or her. Okay? 
Did you get a sexual disease because you were unfaithful to your spouse? Or you're a single Christian and you're out there committing fornication? You get some kind of disease? Oh Lord, heal me. Is he going to heal you? You weren't walking with him. Just like I showed up here. You weren't working with him. Are you like some of these Christians who let deadly snakes bite them because of what it says in Mark 16, 18? They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Because of this, because of this, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Well, some people, that was the Lord says right here, if any deadly snakes bite us, it won't make us sick or die. This is putting the Lord to a test. We have men, I've heard of men out there who let a uh, poisonous snake bite them because of what this verse says. You don't put the Lord to the test. Like I said, there's only one place in the Bible, and I challenge anyone, there's only one place in the Bible where the Lord said, put me to the test. And that's in Malachi 3.10. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me. That's, that's the same test me. Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it. This is the only verse in the Bible that God said to prove them, to test them. But we got people up here letting snakes bite them because the Bible says they won't hurt. They won't hurt them. But the Lord's not going to respect that. He is not going to respect that. Do you think eating junk food that clogs up your arteries helps you have a stroke or a heart attack then we blame God and we're told over and over what's healthy for us to eat and what's, what's not healthy for us to eat but we're eating things that we know clogs up our arteries but what are we doing when they get clogged up and we have a stroke or even a heart attack what happens oh God heal me again we're not listening to them. We know what we should be eating and what we shouldn't eat. But some of us are like, oh, you want to enjoy the pleasures of life instead of listening to the Lord. Because He's given us, doctors are good. I'm not going to say doctors are not good. The Lord does use doctors sometimes. And in this case right here, doctors, they, they tell us, Dr. Oz, the doctors, I mean, even your own doctor will tell you, you need to lose weight or you need to do this. We need to listen. If we don't listen and then we end up with a stroke or a heart attack, whose fault is it? Again, people are praying for this person who had a stroke or a heart attack and they're not healed. Why? Because they didn't listen. Now, I hope you understand what, I'm, what the Lord is trying to show here. Do you smoke? You got cancer. You want God to heal you. For those who smoke, Cancer is going to follow. I mean, it's been proven and proven. But then when you get cancer, who are you going to? God heal me. It's not going to happen. You've been warned by man. The Lord uses, the Lord uses men to speak to us. Just like preachers and teachers, He uses doctors, like I said, to speak to us. So if you're out there smoking and you get cancer, don't go blame God. And if He doesn't heal you, don't blame God. Like I said, this, this message here is not going to be very popular. Because I'm putting the... Well, I'm not. God's putting the blame on you, on us. It's not His fault. Are you worried about tomorrow? Now you're depressed. Now you, get, now you got ulcers. It says in Matthew 6, 30, verses... I mean, chapter 6, verses 30 through 34. This is one that... People are hard to accept this verse right here. It's hard to accept this verse. A lot of Christians can't. But this is the Word of God. Am I reading the Word of God here? This is the Word of God. Verse 30. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Oh, what he was talking about there. He knew what he was talking about when he said, O ye of little faith. Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or worth all shall we be clothed? For, all, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth 
that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. This verse, if we, if people, if Christians can grab this verse, oh my gosh. Seriously. Worrying, worrying is, in, is inconsistent with our faith in God. In fact, it's even sinful. Because it's right here. This is the words of God. If we don't believe this, when you don't believe the word of God, what do you think? What, what, what do you think that is? That's sinning. Oh, I don't believe that. Well, it's the word of God. Worrying is corrected with unbelief. You just don't believe this. This is what it carries with it. Those who have no hope in God are the ones who should worry. Those are the ones who should worry. Those are the ones who should be depressed and ulcer and all that sickness that goes with it. Those are the ones who should worry. But he's telling us right here, the children of God, he's telling us, hey, don't worry about tomorrow. Just like the, I, 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 the grass in the field and all. He takes care of the birds just like he takes care of them. Don't you think he's going to take care of us? His children? But many Christians don't believe that. They don't have faith in it. That's why he said up here, Oh, ye of little faith. Yeah. There is, a, re there is a, a reasonable way of thinking about tomorrow. Like a man who works. He wants to move up in his job. You know, he, he's trying to do things that help him move up. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay? To move up. But if he doesn't, he's content on where he's at. You know why? Because in Luke 3.14... Philippians 4.11, Hebrews 13.5, all three of these verses say to be content with what you have. The Lord says be content with, you, with what you have. So the man, if he's looking for, the, for tomorrow to be moved up, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you're worrying about tomorrow, especially when the Lord says in three verses that I've given you, be content with what you have. If you don't have a lot, be content. If you have a lot, amen. But this is all temporary stuff. Remember that. Temporary things. I know you're not going to like this one. But putting up for retirement, that's not up to the Lord. Putting up for retirement. Now, now I know there's no... People might be cutting off the CD right now because of what I just said. But it's not the Lord's way to put up for retirement. And I'm going to read scriptures on that in a minute. When we think like the world, we will worry like the world. Did y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. When we think like the world, in the flesh, then we'll be like the world. And our heart is not centered on God when we're doing that. Jesus says to focus your attention on, on Him, His hopes. On Him taking care of all of our needs. Because he's, it's in his words. That's what we need to focus on. Instead of worrying about tomorrow, we need to focus on him, Jesus Christ, the Lord. Mm -hmm. Instead of worrying about the things of this world, we should be hungry and thirsty for the, for the, for the coming world. Now, you know, this world is going gonna, gonna, to, the Lord's going to do away with this world. But the world, with the kingdom we got coming, that's where our eyes should be. Not on this world, what's going to happen, and tomorrow. Y'all hey, hear me? Mm -hmm. I know one person's hearing me. <laughs> but hey, I mean, I'm telling you, this is a... Do you know how much peace and rest, if you believe these verses you can have, that we can have? Not mm -hmm. to worry about tomorrow? <laughs> we need to really learn that. Don't worry about tomorrow. We might not even be here tomorrow. Right. The rapture could be tonight. Mm -hmm. Or he can take us home tonight. One of the two. And you're all worried about tomorrow. You're worried about that retirement. Is there enough in there? Philippians 4, 7. And the peace, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through, through Christ Jesus. 
there is so much we don't understand and why things are happening. Okay? There is a lot we don't understand and why things happen. But we have but we have peace in our hearts and mind if we depend on the Lord. That's what he says right here. We can have peace. Amen? Amen. How many people are living in peace? I mean, lost people, they're always worried about tomorrow, but they're lost. But even Christians are doing the same thing. When the Word of God right here says, Hey, I know you don't understand, but I'm the Lord. I'm your Father. I got you. I'll take care of it. Just keep your eyes on me. That's all he's saying. Philippians 4, verses 11 through 14. Now I'm going to read this through the Living Bible because it's a little bit easier to understand. Not that I was ever in need, for I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have learned to be I have learned the secrets of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or an empty, with plenty or little, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Even so, you have done well to share with me in my present difficulties. Now, this is Paul speaking. But he's saying, I can be content whether I have a lot or a little, whether my stomach is empty or full. I'm content with the Lord. All right? Can we live that way? Or we always want more? The lost people are like this, but Christians, Christians ought to be hearing what the Word of God is saying. Be content with what you have. If you always want more, you're not walking with the Lord. The Lord didn't say get here and see how high of an education you could get. He didn't, see, he didn't put you here to see how much money you could make or how much how material things you can have. He didn't put us here for that. That's not what our eyes should be focused on. Now I'm saying all this because, because of this, that's why our Christians get sick. And then we have to pray for them. And again, again, sometimes, but most times, God will not answer that prayer. Because this Christian did not have his eyes on the Lord. Right. Do we understand? Mm -hmm. God promises grace for today and tomorrow. He promises his grace for today and tomorrow, but he doesn't give us grace for the moral now. Did you understand that? His grace for the moral He's not giving it to us now because we're not there yet. Right. He's giving us grace for today. What, we've, what we're going through today. Right. But we're already worrying about tomorrow. Well, He's not going to give us grace for that because tomorrow's not here yet. Right. Are you pulling up for tomorrow? What does James say? <clears throat> James chapter 4 verses 13 Starting at verse 13 through chapter 5, verses 1 through 3. I'm gonna, again, I'm going to read this out of the Living Bible because it's easier to understand. Look here, you who say, Today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and we'll stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like a morning fog. It's here a little while then it's gone. Do you understand what he's saying here? We're only here for, it's just, it's, this is just temporary. We're here and then we're gone. Verse 15. What you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own plans. Do you hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, not me. Did you hear the scripture? You're boasting about your own plans. And all such boasting is evil. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. The next chapter. Look here, you rich people. Weep and groan with anguish because of all your terrible troubles ahead of you. Your wealth is rotting away and your fine clothes are moth-eaten rags. Your gold and silver have become worthless. The very wealth you are counting on will eat away your flesh like fire. This treasure you have accumulated will stand as evidence against you on the day of judgment. These verses are saying a lot here. 
I want to just add Proverbs 27 1 with this. It says, Boast not thyself, boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Don't brag about tomorrow. Don't you know you get people, oh, I got all this money put up, I you know in retirement, I'm gonna be, you know. The Lord said, Your wealth you're counting on. That wealth you're counting on, that retirement that you're counting on, I hope y'all, I hope y'all hear me. Mm -hmm. What's he say? It's going to eat away at your flesh like fire. It'll bring you nothing but worrying, and not only that, it will show God where your heart is. You're showing God where your heart is when you're doing that, because you're making plans for yourself. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. You are making plans for yourself for tomorrow, instead of depending on God. I'm speaking the Word of God here, right. okay? This is the Word of God. I'm giving you the Scriptures. This is not Jesse. Christians need to be at this place. Well, I don't have this today because I'm saving for tomorrow. The Lord gave us money. Whatever money you're making, whatever money we bring in, the Lord said, use it. It's for today. I'm not giving you that money for tomorrow. And I can go a lot more into this, but we're mainly what I'm trying to show here, many Christians are sick because of this. Because they don't put the Lord first and they're not dependent on Him. So they get sick, and again, people pray for whatever sickness they got, and they don't get healed. We're expecting to stay in good health when we're doing exactly the opposite from what God wants us to do. Did y'all hear that? We're doing exactly the opposite from what God wants us to do. And then he, we expect them to heal us for disobeying them. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Again, I'm showing you. He's saying, don't worry about anything. Let your request be known. Let your, let your request be known, he said. But then after you let him know it, let him take care of it. Don't just let him know it, but you keep it on yourself also and you're all worried about it. Because people do that too. They say they give it to the Lord and they did, but they also gave it. They also kept. So they gave it to the Lord, but they kept it also in them. Don't do that. Have faith. Whatever happens, God's way is best, right? Whatever happens, God's way is best. Mm -hmm. Whether we understand it or not. Psalms. I'm going to read the Living Bible again. In Psalms 127, verses 1 and 2. <clears throat> Unless the Lord builds a house, the work of the builders is wasted. Unless the Lord protects a city, Guarding it with Syrians, Syrians will do no good. It is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night. Some of us have to really listen to that. He said it is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night. Anxiety, working for food to eat. For God giveth rest to his loved ones. Working from early morning to late at night God said that's not good for you that's not good for you he also says we need a day of rest because the Sabbath it isn't, the Sabbath is not a day the Lord's day every day is the Lord's day Okay, there's not one day that's the Lord's day the Sabbath is a day of rest and the way and the Lord showed us through the scriptures when he created everything he said he rested on the seventh day. On the seventh day. Now, did God, the Almighty God, did he have, was he tired? No. No. He said he he rested on the seventh day, showing us. Okay, he made these bodies. He created these bodies. He made them, and he knows what these bodies can take. And he's showing us you need a day of rest. If you're working seven days a week, don't blame God if you get sick. I get tired and it, it makes me mad when I hear people getting sick, but they work in seven days a week. Right. Then they wonder why they're sick. Hey, don't blame God for that. 
We need a day of rest. He knew what he's talking about. He made these bodies, right? He made them. He knows what they can do. So those of you who are working seven days a week, do not blame God when you get sick. Because he tells us right here, don't work early in the morning till late at night. Don't do that. Okay? There's several reasons for that, but I'm not going to get into that. But I'm just showing here, we do things that we shouldn't be doing, and then we blame God when we get sick or want Him to heal us. Right. Exodus 23, verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and He shall bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Is, is this getting too heavy for you? It's the scriptures. I'm reading the scriptures to you. If you're not walking with the Lord and serving Him, then how do you want Him to take care, take care of you and take your sickness away? Right here He says, If you do these things, serve the Lord your God, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. This is the Word of God. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Remember, this is not Jesse. And whoever's listening to the CD, this is, this is the scriptures. This is not my opinion. I'm not giving my opinion. Right here it says, you serve the Lord God. He says, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Amen? Amen. Again, I'm trying to show. Sometimes we bring sickness on ourselves. I'm going to give one more verse. Jeremiah 17, 5. Thus saith the Lord, curse be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Be careful when you're not doing God's will, when you're not walking with the Lord, because right here, thus saith the Lord. God is saying right here, God, thus saith the Lord. When it says, thus saith the Lord, you should give it a little bit more attention. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Like I said a while ago, when we get sick, when we do get sick, where should we go to first? The Lord. the Lord. How many of us do that? It's just automatic. It's just like automatic. Okay, got to go to the doctor. Take it to the Lord. Our doctor is, our doctor is the greatest of all. He can right. heal any sickness. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any sickness. Okay? Remember that. Don't put men before God. Put God before men. Now, why some are not healed? This is these verses right here. This is the reason some are not healed. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened, that in it, that it cannot save, neither is his hear his ear heavy that he cannot hear. You can't be in a place where the Lord can't help you. Okay? That's what he's saying. And nothing can get in the way of Him hearing you. Okay? When you're walking with the Lord, when you're a Christian walking with the Lord, walking in the Spirit, He's got you. But, verse 2 says, Your iniquities have separated. Then iniquities mean sin. Your sins have separated between you and your God. And your sins have hid His face from you that He will not hear. Did you hear this verse? Your sins. You're in a place where you have left them. Because of sin, you're not walking with the Lord. And until you come to Him with a repentant heart, He doesn't hear you. That's what this verse is saying. So if you're praying for somebody else because they're sick, but you have, but you have sin in your life, and you haven't repented of it, the Lord's not going to hear you. So praying for that person over there that's sick, you're not doing them any good because you haven't made yourself right with God. Husbands, the spiritual head of the house, if you're not doing what it says in 1 Peter 3, 7, your prayers are not being heard for someone who needs healing. Do you hear me, husbands? Your prayers are not being healed because in 1 Peter 3, 7 it says, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them, according, talking about the wife, dwell with them according to knowledge, given unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of grace of life, 
that your prayers be not hindered. So if we're not honoring our wife as the weaker vessel, if we're not doing that, your prayers are being hindered. So now, now I'm not talking about the sick person. Now I'm talking about the person who's praying for the sick. Husband, if you're out there and you're praying for sick people, but you're not honoring your wife as the weaker vessel, you're praying for nothing. Because right here it says it. So I'm showing you through the scriptures, there's many reasons why maybe the Lord's not healing when we pray. Either it's because of us, or it's because of the person who's praying for us. You know, like I said, many times I hear people say, I don't know why the Lord didn't heal them. Well, we're finding out many reasons why the Lord didn't heal. These are several reasons here why the Lord didn't heal. Let me say this, we're not to be like Job's friends and judge. Remember Job? We had a teaching on Job. Because we don't know why a person is sick and not healed, just like Job. God was using Job to show Satan how he wouldn't curse God. So God allowed the devil to make Job sick. But I'm sure people were around judging him, you know, like his friends. Well, you must have did this or you must have did that. This is why you're sick. So, when people are sick and they don't get healed, it might be a reason. This is, this is a good reason, though. I mean, the Lord was using Job. So, there's another reason. God might be using this sickness to glorify Him later on. You hear me? Mm -hmm. And we're finding out tonight, through the Scriptures, why the Lord doesn't heal sometimes. Right. Like I said, that's a big question that goes around Christians. So these are the answers. God has given me the scriptures to give to you. Right. So it will not long, no longer be a question. We just pray for God's will to be done. Right. We don't know why this is happening. Why this person is sick. Whether it be his fault. Or your fault. Or maybe the Lord's using this sickness for his glory. Amen. Does sin cause us to be sick? Yeah, we're finding out, yes, sin can cause us to be sick. Matthew 9, 2. And behold, they brought to him a, a man sick of the palsy, laying on the bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer, thy sins be forgiven thee. So this guy was sick because of his sins. That's what he said. He's healing his sin. That made him sick. Same thing in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is, is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. What Paul says, that there is sex sin among the brethren. That's what he's talking about here. Among the Christians, there are sex sins. And he says that there is a son that is having his father's wife. Now, it's not saying his mother. Okay? It's talking about a stepmother. But either way, whether even, even, if you believe it's his mother, go ahead and believe it's his mother. It doesn't matter because both are sin. Alright? You know, it could be a stepmother or it could be his mother. Whatever you want to believe right there, you believe it. But guess what? It's both sin. Alright? But if you, if he says that even the Gentiles didn't do this because in the Roman law it was strictly against the Romans like, their law this was strictly prohibited they didn't allow this this is Romans law but we're talking about us as Christians okay then we drop down to verse 4 in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of the Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus Paul says to kick them out of church, break off fellowship for someone who's doing this. Just like it says in Matthew chapter 18, verses through eight, 15 through 18. It, it talks about if there's a brother in the church and he's backslidden or he's in the world, we're supposed to, we're supposed to confront him, talk to him, try to get him to repent. If he doesn't repent, the Lord says to bind him from the church. And the Lord says, whatever you bind in the church, they're bound with me also. 
If he's not walk, right to walk with the church, then he's not right to walk with me. This is what the Lord says in Matthew 18. So you get him out of the church. Also in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 11, it says, But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator, a covenantist, an adulterer, a railer, a drunkard, or an extortioner, with such a one not to eat. Not only do you kick them out of the church, but right here the Lord is saying, don't even eat with this person. Don't even eat with them. That's the word of God. Destruction of the flesh. Is there a sin in your life? Which you're not repenting of? I mean, this, these scriptures ought to have you thinking. Thinking, is, is this what I've been doing? Is this, is this why the Lord hasn't heard me? Or is this why the Lord hasn't healed me? Okay? Let's look at an, another one, which a lot of you are not going to like this one either. But Malachi chapter 3, verses 8 through 11. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. If I'm going to rob someone, it's not going to be God. Huh? If you're going to rob someone, don't rob God. But what, what, the verse that I just read, what did it say? It says you're robbing God. How? By not tithing and offering. Now this ain't a teaching on tithing, I'm not going to get on that. But it says we rob God when we do these things. Verse 9, you are cursed if you don't tithe, you're robbing God. And then verse 9 says, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. He's speaking to Christians here, not, not lost people. This cursing, this cursing isn't your salvation. So what do you think this curse could be? It could be sickness. It could be sickness. So, I mean, I'm just reading the verses here. You're cursed with a cursed. Number, verse 10 and like I said, it's not, a, uh, it's not a curse from salvation. I'm not saying you lose your salvation here. But you are cursed. And it might be with a sickness. Right. Verse 10, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, which I read a while ago, now within, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine, vine cast her fruits before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. I will rebuke the devourer. Who's taking your money? That's what he's talking about. Whatever's taking your money, he will rebuke him. Is it a doctor? Huh? I mean, if, if the curse could be a sickness, well, what are you doing? You're going to the doctor. Do you see how you how you can put this together? Right. Yeah. Now, if you don't if you don't want the doctor taking all your money, seek the Lord. And I mean, it's right here. It's right here. You could be having a curse because you're robbing God. I'm mean, just reading you the verses here. I'm just reading the verses to you. You could be robbing God. You're cursed with a curse. And if it is sickness, then. The rebuke to the bar, he just might take that doctor away if you start listening to him and you're not sick. It's the doctor taking all your money. That's all I got to say. Now in Philippians 3.19, Paul says, There are some who, whose sickness come from themselves, for they have made their belly their God. Philippians 3.19 says that. You can have many kinds of sickness from the belly. He's talking about people who are glutton for food. They can't get by unless they're stuffing themselves. This is this is the word. I'm just I'm just showing the word of God to you, okay? Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 29 and 30. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthy, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this call, many are weak and sickly, sickly among you, and many sleep. Now this is talking about the Lord's Supper. 
a lot of times whoever's whatever pastor you're under and and you're having the Lord's Supper he reads this well it should be anyway he should be reading this verse to you because right here it says if you take the Lord's Supper unworthy for this call many are weak and sick and sick among you because we took the Lord's Supper that is something that's supposed to be holy and pure very holy and pure when we do the Lord's Supper and if we got sin on our life that we have not repented of then right here it says you could get sick from it the Lord could make you sick from it okay now for the question was why are this person not getting healed I'm giving you several, several scriptures on why they are not getting healed. Another is in Numbers chapter 12. Miriam spoke against Moses and the Lord gave her leprosy. This woman spoke against Moses and it says the Lord gave her leprosy. M-I-R-I-A-M Miriam. She spoke against Moses so the Lord gave her leprosy. Now, if you didn't know this, you're praying for her, right? Oh, she's got leprosy. We got to pray for her. Well, if she doesn't get healed, well, we didn't know that she was speaking against Moses or whoever. Further up, it showed where uh, they were against Moses and God and were sick. So, through this teaching, and tonight was, was a heavy one, because I'm showing through the scriptures, a lot of time it's our fault. It's our fault because we got this sickness. But it's not God's fault if he doesn't heal us. Right. And for those who are praying for us, now you have a pretty good idea. Well, like I said, we're not to judge. We just pray. Because it could be, that sickness could be for good or it could be because that person was bad. We don't know. So when we pray for someone and they don't get healed, don't think right away, oh, they must have sin in their life. They could be like Job, where God was using that for his glory. So don't judge people. If we're praying for someone and they don't get healed, don't judge them. Okay?